talk about underestimating sources of innovation. I'm going to give some personal examples that have led to my breakthrough and then talk about um, a, an initiative I'm involved with in my pro professional career on how we are breaking through. Well, a lot of people have different definitions for the word innovation, uh, but my definition today is meaningful uniqueness. Uh, so I'm going to lead into my uh, personal experiences uh, when I talk about smart people. And uh, this underestimating sources of innovation uh, idea is behind um, this concept of talent-driven innovation. So I was the first in my family to go to a four-year college. Uh, that's what my family had encouraged me to do. That's what society encouraged me to do, and that's what my school encouraged me to do because it was the thought process that that is where the opportunities were. Um, a lot of family around me, um, my brothers and friends, they actually went to, um, you know, went the more technical path. They went, uh, got welding certificates, tool and die making degrees, those type of things. Um, so at the end of my um, college uh, days, and when I had gone out into looking for career opportunities, um, you know, I was having a lot of difficulty with that. Uh, however, my brothers had employers knocking on their door <laughs> uh, looking for them. Uh, so I guess I question uh, at the end of that process who the smart person is. Uh, I mean, and, and to emphasize that is I actually had to beg companies to hire me because it, it was actually against me that I had a college degree. <laughs> I don't know if there was some risk there, probably uh, cost or high maintenance person, not sure. Um, but what I've come to realize is when, because I have been the first in my family to get a college degree, I was kind of dubbed the smart person. Um, but what I have learned, and it's been my, my personal breakthrough, is that my brothers, uh, my family and friends around me that, have, that are in um, you know, industries and that have degrees in welding and, and uh, technical degrees of that nature are extremely smart people. Um, they, you know, they don't have um, you know, high-level degrees. They don't have uh, big, fancy titles, but they're skills uh, in the science, technology, engineering, math, um, continue to oppress me. Um, I, I want to then lead into some examples um, of my uh, family that have been in uh, companies that where I believe those companies have missed opportunities of innovation. So the first example I want to give is my uh, husband. He was a welder in a company. He was a tank welder. And the process in that company was that the engineers up in the office would develop the blueprints and they would hand it down to the welders and the assemblers uh, in the production to make the, um, you know, the, the idea on the blueprints. And a lot of times, because my husband was the welder actually putting these together, he recognized that the blueprints, the way they were drawn up, were either going to lead to a, fal a, falsy, a false product uh, or you know, product in the tank's case that would leak or wouldn't be as efficient or designed as well as it could be. Um, but that company had no culture, no process to take his ideas. Um, he was the welder, and it actually um, was not allowed. There was no communication between the engineering department and, you know, obviously the welders and the production department. A uh, second example I wanted to give um, was a, a, another friend of mine. He's a heavy industrial mechanic, um, and he does... Uh, actually, I haven't seen an engine that this man cannot uh, fix, or some type of mechanical uh, device. And uh, most cases, he can actually hear what's wrong with the engine before he can, um, well, before he goes ahead and fixes it. Uh, again, continuously blown away by um, the knowledge of these folks. But he actually, in his job, recognized that they were doing something that cost a lot of money, it was taking a lot of time, and it was producing a lot of waste. And so he actually took it upon himself to design and manufacture a, a product, a device that made his job easier, but also reduced costs for the company and uh, reduced waste. And then other divisions in his company began to use it. Uh, so he, you know, he thought and had conversations with me about, you know, I think this is a pretty good idea. And I said, yeah, I think you should, you know, talk to the, you know, your supervisors or, you know, talk to the company about it. And he was actually afraid to do that even though it was saving the, com you know, the company time and money and waste, um, again, there was no structure, no culture to uh, you know, transmit these ideas. So um, he, I you know, encouraged him to do that, and at the company basically came back and said, you know, it's really great, we're, we're glad you did that, but 
we don't know what to do with it. So I just want to give those couple of examples um, before I transition into what I'm excited about in my uh, professional career, an initiative that we are working on that I think addresses those um, missed uh, opportunities for innovation in those companies. Um, the initiative is called Innovation Engineering, and the reason it was put together is to reignite American manufacturing innovation. Um, and the reason we need to do this is because manufacturing is, is very, very critical to our country. Um, and it actually was the foundation of our country in a lot of cases. Um, our country was founded on innovation and ingenuity and entrepreneurs. Uh, but unfortunately, ev evolution uh, of the industry has led to um, not just manufacturing, but I think our, our country as a whole, um, cultures and uh, individuals that are more risk adverse versus, um, you know, on the more innovative entrepreneurial curve. Um, and so there's reasons we're risk adverse. Um, and so this uh, process is, or this um, tool, this innovation engineering is a system so that it continually uh, provides a process for uh, continuity, uh, specifically in the area of innovation. And it also um, puts together systems so that you can engineer innovation. Um, and like I had mentioned, um, you know, we have a, a culture, uh, and especially in manufacturing industries, um, to be risk adverse. And that's uh, very threatening to our industry because uh, today companies have to think innovatively and they have to be unique. Um, and what's said about in this process is if you're not meaningfully unique, you better be cheap. And it's very difficult in this global economy to compete on price. Um, this system that's put together is to break through the barriers of reasons why companies don't engage in more innovative activities and the two examples that I had given earlier. The barriers are it takes a, lot of t a long time to see results, it costs money, it's risky, and it means change. Uh, and in some cases today, too, there's uh, this issue of the leadership and the position that they're in uh, in their life and their time cycle, um, or in the, ex some of the examples I had given, the, you know, the leadership of those individuals in those positions, um, you know, how they would have gotten to their leadership. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about how it works. Um, and again, I had said about a continuous flow of innovations, uh, but it has, you know, four main areas where you define, you clarify ideas on the concepts, you discover, um, and this, the thought process is to fail fast, fail cheap, and it's okay to fail. Um, you just have to keep doing. You have to, to you know, define the idea, um, and implement on the idea and then continuously learn from it. Uh, then obviously develop, make it real, um, and then deliver. And the, the principles behind this system uh, are a lot of the, the Deming, uh, uh, the Deming uh, cycle, which is the plan, do, study, act. So continue to just try it, might not be perfect, improve upon it, or in some cases, um, you know, check it off the list. It wasn't working. And the um, individual that's leading or helped to lead to develop this um, is basically trying to make a movement with it. Um, but he works, and his company work with Fortune 1000 companies like Disney, 3M, uh, on their innovative processes, which we obviously know they are innovative companies. Um, but they have, you know, this uh, system behind them that helps to encourage their process. Um, and what we're trying to do with it is to right-size it. Uh, for small and medium-sized manufacturers, and it's a process that works for companies, organizations, universities, um, anyone. So just to talk a little, bit, a, bit, a little bit more about how it works and how I think it can address the lost opportunities I talked about earlier, is it starts with um, gathering a lot of different individuals in a company or an organization, or in some cases, suppliers, customers, uh, sketching out their ideas on a very high level, and you can, with some of these tools, there's idea generation, uh, some of the things are idea mining, where you uh, throw out an idea and then you just build upon that. So you can have thousands of these, either existing or new ideas. Uh, but then you start to funnel those down. You uh, take those several ideas and then you define them out, um, you know, through a process. You answer questions uh, along the lines of the problem, the promise, uh, the proof, and then the math, the math game plan. Um, then you go on to the next, um, the next section, which is discover, and that is where, and this is to help reduce risk. 
and that is that you um, build confidence in the idea, is you do the due diligence, you do the research, and most importantly, you identify the death threats. Why wouldn't this idea work? And then you, once you identify them, you can obviously address them. Um, and then, obviously, the funnel continues to narrow it down into um, developing it, what are the steps to take it to market or to implement it uh, into action, and then you deliver. But you obviously don't stop there. Um, you deliver, you learn, and then you go on to the next idea and bring that through the cycle. Um, and again, this is the other part that I'm really excited about because, um, as I had mentioned with the ideas generation, it brings in a lot of different people. And this is where I believe if um, the examples I had given earlier, if those companies were to have had something like this or some type of system for innovation, um, that they would have not lost those uh, opportunities for I improvement ideas. Um, and the method behind it included in this uh, innovation engineering system is simultaneous engineering. And the way it's, um, the way the concept is laid out is that marketing is too important to leave to marketing and engineering is too important to leave to engineering. Now I'm not, you know, uh, putting engineering down or, or marketing or um, anything of that nature. It's just together they're more powerful than in one department taking it to the other department. It should be simultaneous. So I just want to end with this idea um, to share, and I think this is a way to break through some of the hesitancies and barriers um, to creating a culture, uh, and specifically a culture in our manufacturing industry, but uh, to kind of re reignite and spark um, innovation in our country again. Um, and it's this thought behind leading with a structured system uh, we have a lot of systems in what we do, no matter you know, what your role is, whether it's in your church, your company, your organization. We have a lot of systems. We have accounting systems. We have you know, operational systems, um, you know, human resource systems, those kind of things. Uh, we need to and should have innovation systems. Uh, and what those systems do is they engage people at all levels um, and at all you know, parts that your company and organization connects with. Uh, it encourages them to participate, it rewards or recognizes them, uh, basically celebrating successes, even if small successes. Um, and then, you know, this will lead to the development of a cultural innovation um, to more, you know, happy and engaged people um, and to really great ideas and innovations. And just want to end with, um, and a lot of times, the ideas that are thrown out uh, no matter where they come from, and it's the idea that makes the group laugh or to say it's impossible is usually the best idea. So that is the idea to share, is to lead with a uh, structured system or implement a, a system for innovation. Thank you. Thank you.